Look, look at how not round Annabelle is. Hi, little one. Oh, you're so precious. So, Annabelle had her calf this weekend. Hi, baby. It's such a good mama, Annabelle. Unfortunately, it's a little bull calf. We were hoping for a heifer. We really needed a heifer, just given that Annabelle's starting to get up there in age. But at least we've secured uh, beef for 2024. Let's get in here. Hi, little one. It's okay. Go in here. Look at him. Hi, precious baby. Can you look at me? No. <laughs> Trying to get a good shot. Hi, Wellington. Looking so good. Hey. There you go. He's doing good. Hi, cutie. Healthy calf. He's nursing great. Of course, Annabelle's taking excellent care of him, which we expect from her. She's an excellent mom. We are definitely going to handle him a lot more than we handled Wellington. Can I pet you? Oh, you're going to nurse? I'll let you nurse. There you go, bud. Hold on, buddy. You've got to latch on before you bump it, silly. Hi, cutie. You're so precious. Hey, Mama. You want to watch me ride the new ride? Sure. Oh. oh, there they go. You going to keep up with Mom? You've been doing an excellent job keeping up with Mom. There you go. I gotta get them fed and I'm gonna milk out Annabelle to give her some relief. She is really full. So. <laughs> He's doing an excellent job keeping up with her. I'm definitely not having to worry about him. Well, you're such a good mama. Yes, you are. Look at that beautiful baby. He's such a pretty boy. Such a pretty boy. And Wellington's being a good big brother. <laughs> oh, the snoozes. The chin scratches, they're the best. Yes. Hi, so sweetie. Oh, yes. He's a cuddle bug. Is yours a cuddle bug? You're just a big old sweetie. Yes, you are. I'm so baby. Oh, why? <laughs> they're always so sweet. We're gonna keep you sweet though, okay? We're gonna handle you much more than your brother Wellington. Yes, you're gonna be handled, you're gonna be sweet. Yes, I so baby. Oh. So, we're gonna work more with this one than we did with Mr. Wellington so that he's actually handled and gentled. And that is crazy. Is Mr. Bonehead over here talking about you, Wellington? He's just like, nom, nom, nom. like no, I'm gonna love on you. You're just so sweet. Yeah, you are. Mm -hmm. I'm not your bubbles. 
I hear you, Annabelle. <laughs> she just, she, she peeks around to check on him and she's like, oh, okay, it's just you. You're good. <laughs> there you go, baby. Oh, yeah. See, we give the scratches that you can't scratch. Oh, does that feel good? <laughs> he like arched his back when I was scratching his back right here. <laughs> does that feel good? So just kind of just touch him all over. Get him used to us. Oh, did I get your little ears? Oh, look at those little ears. They're so cute. Just kind of try and handle him and touch him all over so he's a little bit more used to us. And I'm gonna try and just focus on doing this every day so that he stays gentled and handled. I'm gonna have to get a little halter to leave on you so I can catch him easily. Or a collar. I think a collar would be good. Yeah, let's get a collar for him. So sweet. Look at these eyelashes. Oh my goodness. Look at those eyelashes. Hi. What is that? Oh, it's so, so sweepy. Such a sweet baby. Yes, you are. It's your little nose. You're so, so baby. <laughs> so, you know our goat Mocha, who just had her, her little buckling caramel. Well, last year she had a goat who we named Sophie. And Sophie is a, she is the daughter of Saffron. So she is 50% myotonic fainting goat and 50% Nigerian dwarf. Now, we had them penned up with the electric fencing. And one day Saffron got out into their pen. He was only in there for a few hours. We got him out, stuck him back in and we were good. He never did it again. I just got tests back. Sophie's pregnant. So the little hussy couldn't wait till we got our new buck in. She had to go and get bred back to Saffron. Which is not like, it's not like a, uh, it's not like the end of the world. This is called, they do these things called line breeding. It's not something we wanted to do though. We tried to not do that. We literally did everything we could try to do to try and prevent that from happening. And it still happened. One of those sayings, nature always finds a way, of course. So, this little hussy. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Sophie. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Sophie. You getting yourself all tangled up? Yeah, you're tied up because you you're, you're not allowed to eat too much grain. Yeah, we're trying to put weight on mocha. But look at that belly. We, because she, here, get yourself untangled, mama. So, it's not, I, her breeding is definitely not ideal because she, I wanted to wait till she was a year to breed her because the rule of thumb is that for goats, you want to wait. The rule of thumb is that with goats, you want to wait until they are about 80% of their adult weight or growth and um i mean she was she would have had to, i think she would have been eight possibly nine months old when she was bred which like i said not ideal but it could have been worse like she could have gotten bred at, at five or six months old they can go into heat as early as that so Definitely not what I wanted to happen, but we're gonna work with it. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Sophie. She's looking at me like, what are you What are you saying? What are you saying? You, you couldn't wait, like just a few more months. A few more months. So she, her earliest expected kidding date would be July 2nd. I wanted to breed her to a myotonic fainting goat buck. But no, you couldn't wait. Mm. 
So the only concern that I have with this is that her hips might not be wide enough. She might have some complications during delivery. Um, I mean, she shouldn't. There's people that have bred their goats this early and not had issues, but we are gonna have to be very restrictive on her feed intake to prevent that baby or babies from growing too big and, cr and creating complications with her delivery. So, that means very strict diet for Miss Sophie. trellis taken down and we managed to get one fruit tree transplanted today. I had to stop because I got really really tired with that but we're gonna go ahead and get try and get not only the tomato trellises which we just took down but we're also gonna try and take down the uh, arch trellis. But here's the cool thing. So arch trellis last year we planted loofah in the uh, in the arch trellis which was great. We got lots of loofah So we got lots of loofah, it died back, came back, we, we actually cut back to let them dry out. One of the vines came back, produced even more loofah, and then a freeze came through, killed it. Well now look what's coming back again. <laughs> so um, before it can have a chance to take over again, we're actually going to cut it at the base. It actually looks like there might be three or four that have come back, probably from the droppings, from the seeds falling. So um, we're gonna go ahead and cut these at the base or pull them up so they are done and uh, clear off the arch piece, remove the loofah. But something that was really cool that we found in here, and you might recognize it if you garden, you'll recognize the leaves immediately, is, look at that. We've got a volunteer tomato and it's already producing fruit. Looks like a uh, either a pear, I'm pretty sure it's a pear tomato, some variety of pear tomato. Um, could be aroma, but I think it's a pear based on the shape. So we got one there, we've got another one there. And this one's also producing some fruit. So we actually might be able to get some tomatoes this year. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> See, we got a bunch there, a bunch down here, a bunch over there. So we'll actually get a, a little harvest off of two tomato plants. I'll take that before we start tearing things up for the garden. So we're gonna go ahead and pull these up. We'll just let them grow, harvest whatever tomatoes we get. And then whenever it's time for us to start bringing dirt in to uh, level this up and raise it, soil, set it up that's when they'll go ahead and they'll be done. So, <clears throat> so we're gonna go ahead and get to work on that. Time for Leon's daily joke. Leon, what joke do you have for us today? Knock, knock. Who's there? The interrupting cow. The interrupting Moo! cow. Oh, that's, <laughs> what a rude cow. happy with that so I actually found an additional tomato plant 
tried to leave the tomatoes undisturbed so we can at least harvest those tomatoes before we clear this out. It's gonna, cause it's gonna be at least a couple weeks before we do that. Um, but we'll let the tomatoes sit undisturbed. Hopefully we can harvest some tomatoes from them before we clean all this up. But I'm gonna leave these tea posts in the ground so I know where the strawberry patch and asparagus patch start. So I gotta get in here and start clearing out the grass. Which I think I'm gonna try and start doing that now. Let's start uncovering the uh, strawberries and asparagus. See what stra see how many strawberries survived. Cause I'm gonna be transplanting those to pots. Uh, maybe I'll bring some pots out tomorrow and we'll go ahead and transplant the strawberries into those pots. And then I just gotta figure out what I'm doing with the asparagus when we start bringing in dirt to level it up. Do we wanna set up a satisfying time-lapse of me clearing the uh, strawberries and asparagus bed? Let's see if we can do that. Oh man, okay, I'm, I'm tired, but I feel accomplished. We got the entire asparagus and strawberry patch. Well, it's more of a asparagus patch now. We got two strawberry plants, asparagus, asparagus. You probably can't see it, but we got a bunch of asparagus in here that survived. See, asparagus, asparagus right there. Look at that. And then another strawberry plant. Unfortunately, we lost pretty much all of our strawberry plants, but that happens when you kind of let your garden go and get overgrown like that. But we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine asparagus plants. I'm happy with that. <laughs> 